you, you basically had to teach yourself how to walk again. Twice. That's insane. Yeah. And so yeah. obviously that gave you enough motivation to want to focus on your body in a very real way so that you can function again when you went and studied that in college and then took that into your career. And we'll get back to that. But could you tell us about this injury? What happened? Yeah. Um, the more and more that I think about it, I recall this part of my story and the more that I'm asked about it, it becomes more abundantly clear that this physical injury was a direct result, direct manifestation of untreated, prolonged, poor mental health. Mm. And wow. what I went through, I, I do want to, I do want to give, um, 19, 20, what were the injuries? I was 20, 21. Okay. I want to give 21 year old chase a lot of credit and a lot of grace and sympathy because what he went through sucked ass. <laughs> It sucked. I mean, I, in literally an instant, my life changed. And I've had a few of those moments in my 38 short years here on earth, but that one really did it for me. In an instant, my life changed. And it was a direct result of me trying to put myself on a path to even more potential physical harm because I was running away from just immense grief and mm -hmm. immense pain and trauma of the death of my father. And the physical aspect was me leading an ambush with my squad over this hill. And it had maybe like three, four days out and um, running on a few hours of sleep. We're in what's called full battle rattle. I'm in all my body armor. I got my M16, my um, gas mask, my rucksack. I, I mean, we're running at about, you know, 80 pounds mm -hmm. of stuff. What country were you in? So this was a pre-deployment training, a war okay. game, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was going to be, it was this training. And then I would go on to a national training center command uh, for about like a month or so uh, before going to Afghanistan. And it was all, I was in pursuit of volunteering for every deployment that I could. Because like I shared earlier, I was a Russian intelligence specialist. And what I did, I did that about two years, two-ish years, uh, part of my total six years career. And uh, that was all like behind the scenes stuff. You know, it's kind of like in the movies and the buildings with the windows and you're going through a lot of information, variety of information collected in various ways. And you're, you know, then passing it over to the powers that be mm -hmm. in country, in theater. Uh, I also worked direct support for a lot of intelligence missions, in South America, Central America, running human trafficking, sex trafficking, and just really hearing and witnessing like just the true evil of the world. Mm -hmm. If you can imagine the type of person that would make it their life mission to capture women and children yeah. and to just do God knows what with them um, and just treat them as commodities. Um, and so I was in such a poor headspace and poor heart space about what to do and how to just heal and get over the death of my father, who went through a really gruesome 18 month diagnosis with ALS, Lou Gehrig's mm -hmm. disease. And he was, my, he was my everything. He was my hero, he was my dad. He was the reason that I ultimately decided to join the military. Kind of just, I, I love that the way that he talked about his career in the military. And it's just something that made sense to me to kind of follow in my father's footsteps. Mm -hmm. So you decided to join after he died? No, it was, he was still alive. Okay. But actually during my basic combat training, he got the diagnosis. And so he passed away about a year and a half into my military career. And so for the next year or so, I just, I shoved it all down. I shoved it all down, just work, 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 go, go, go. Let me try to get promoted. Let me try to make myself as appealing as possible to, to go on these deployments. And I was volunteering. I was looking for any option that I could because the concept of me coming home in a box wrapped in an American flag, just like they buried my dad, was more appealing than continuing on dealing with this, this, this pain. Wow. And so I want to be very, I was never suicidal. I want to make that very clear. I was never like thinking about taking my own life or actively putting myself in harm's way. But, you know, money comes up a lot in my story. You know, like I said, kind of coming from not a lot and having gone through a lot of money mindset shifts. I'll never forget this, this moment, another moment that changed besides that, that injury moment, um, which I don't think I clarified, by the way. So in the, in the injury, leading this ambush in the war game, 
um, I went up and over this berm, this hill. And it's just one of those just freak things where you just, all the conditions are stacked against you. You move the wrong way, the wrong speed, wrong everything. Mm -hmm. And I went up and as fast as I went up, I remember I was down as fast as that happened. And I blacked out, I heard and felt this loud pop. I remember grabbing the back, my back and my, my, my leg and I went down. Next thing I know, I'm coming to and the, the medic is there over top of me and everybody's trying to like, you know, tuning, 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 what happened, what happened? I thought I got shot. I was like, I didn't know we were doing live fire. I was like, I was pissed. I was yelling. Oh I thought, you know, I didn't know this was a live fire training. You know, I'm over here fucking <laughs> shooting blanks. Like who shot me? And that's what it felt like. And I, yeah. again, I heard and felt this, this pop. What had happened was my ha I tore my hamstring. And so if you ever had that happen, it's really audible and really painful. And also in that kind of just quick movement, um, I had a lot of, I guess torsion is kind of the right word. Just my L4 and L5, my, my lower back kind of went one way mm. and the rest of my spine decided to try to go to the other way. Oh my God. And so it, just, it was just all this immediate trauma and shit that happened to me. And so I get, I get medevaced out, I get pulled off of that training. So there goes any opportunity I had to, you know, immediately deploy, try to rehabilitate, definitely don't listen to the doctors or physical therapists. I wound up jacking my shit up again. I try to go on this just uh, extra long training ruck march. Uh, it was about, I think it hit me about mile eight and my, my hips just blew. Jeez. And so what happened was my femurs, because of so much overcompensation I was going through, mm -hmm. coupled with, it turns out, I guess there was some degenerative issues with um, my bones at the time um, that I, they're like, yeah, we got to pull you out completely. And so not only are you not going to be um, on this volunteer list for any deployment, but we actually, we got to pull you out of your mission, out of your job, off base, put you, transfer you bases, go over to this medical hold unit and reconstruct your hips basically. So at 22, yeah, about 22, uh, I get put in the hospital and I just, I go through one surgery and it's, you know, bedridden for days in the hospital for days, bedridden for days, a week or two. And then it's just, you know, I'm at home just on my own. I've got living assistance. I'm getting shuttled back and forth to the hospital. It takes me 20 minutes to get help, to get up out of bed, to go take a leak in the bathroom. And, uh, and then that was my life for about eight to 10 months. Oh my gosh. Until I could walk again and rehabilitate to, to load bear, just God. to be able to walk on my own. And then once that happened, they're like, cool, we're going to go back into the other side now. And so that's what I, that was my life for about a year and a half. And so that was the physicality. 